is Chad Holmes. I am Scenario Security Evangelist, and we are here with Derek Sellers. So Derek, can you tell us a little bit first about who are you and who you work for? Yeah. So I'm Derek Sailors. I'm the Information Systems Director and Information Security Officer at Community Hospital in Cook, Nebraska. I've uh, been in healthcare for about 15 years at this point, um, mainly focusing on cybersecurity within the last seven to eight years. Yeah. Great. And this is the first time we've talked since Hims last year. Hims so, last year. Yeah, right? So down in Orlando. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey over the last year in terms of IoT security? Yeah. So, yeah, because we didn't have any. Right, yeah. and so when we just, started, just like most people don't have any, right? Exactly, yeah. we didn't have anything, and we met you guys down there at Hems, and it was like, wow, this is such a massive gap that we don't have, like, we don't have any solution for this at all, um, and that's what's really sort of driving the conversation after speaking with you and everybody else, um, and then eventually where we ended up at is purchasing you guys and onboarding, and the purchasing process was super easy. Um, with you guys, uh, it was fun, which is something that I enjoy. Like it was just fun dealing with our salespeople and the onboarding team and the project management and everything like that. So shout out to Will and Peter; they were amazing, and Ares and everybody else. So um, yeah, great. We can make selling and buying easy as long as the money's there. Right. More importantly, let's talk about the actual protection. So can you talk a little bit about the implementation? How long did that take? Was it easy, hard, somewhere in between? Yeah. yeah. So first two meetings we had with your project managers. Uh, the box was already shipping. And we're like, we don't even have cables. We don't even know where we're gonna put this oh. in the rack yet. Like we weren't ready for you guys to be that ready, right? Which was good for yeah. us because, um, you know, it, the box showed up, we plugged it in, um, configured it to start looking at stuff. And then we let it run for a while before we even had our next project management call. Um, and we didn't have access to our portal and stuff. So we were very anxious as to, what is this thing pulling and what are we going to find when we actually get access to our portal? Yeah. Um, and what we found out when we actually got access to the portal and worked with your project management team to onboard was there was a lot of things that we didn't even realize we had on the network, which as someone that was a network engineer before that, I took a lot of pride in knowing what every IP was issued, MAC addresses and you know different VLANs and segmentation and stuff. And then all of a sudden, this, like we were talking about earlier, Nintendo start showing up. Um, weird Raspberry Pi things that I'm like, I don't even know the why. Tes the Teslas are the one we go to. There's always a Tesla on a network <laughs> yeah. for some reason. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. in our neck of the woods, no. Okay. It might be more of a, right maybe a, a Pony Express style yeah. okay. you know, deal. Right. But anyway, 3G, 4G connectivity, yeah. whatever, right? Um, so as we started scoping this, it became a lot more than just what we bought it for originally, which was biomed. Yep. We wanted to see our radiology modalities. We wanted to see our lab equipment and everything like that. But what we didn't realize is that there was a lot more components that weren't just uh, you know, a CT machine. That CT machine also had two Raspberry Pis that did some of the um, environmental monitoring um, that we didn't, we issued IPs for, but we had no idea really what they were doing. Um, so as the, as the sensor continued to pick up things and look at things, um, we realized what the scope was. Um, so <clears throat> after running it for about two months, um, along with uh, some of our other security platform things, we consolidated a big executive report and went to the board. And when we went to the board, um, usually, at least in our neck of the woods, um, cybersecurity is definitely like, oh, the IT guys handle it. You know, we don't, we don't care. Right. We did a very elaborate presentation on this with your executive summary reports and everything like that. Um, we added a few different dynamics in there that we thought would be more beneficial to try to maybe make things a little bit more understandable for our board that sure. aren't, you know, privy to some of the terminology. Kind of customize um, the message to your audience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And what we found out was they're like, they were just as almost dumbfounded as we were. Like, wow you guys are dealing with a lot more than just computers and servers. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a ton of components and that's where the IoT and IOMT thing really came into play for us was we were able to really discover a lot of stuff. And now what we can do is using some of your tools that are built in there, looking at you know, patch updates and stuff because we have vendors that we pay massive amounts of money to to service these things and update these things where we didn't even know we had them. So now it's really helped us engage and utilize a lot of more of our service contracts as well as create a safer network. So it's not just about security. You're using it for much more than you're, you're finding devices, you're making sure your other vendors are being kept honest on what they're supposed to be doing. You, you mentioned this went to the board level for your initial presentation. 
is that a one-time thing? Is it, hey, we are doing cybersecurity, don't worry, or are they seeing it more regularly? Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because when we took it, we're like, we felt, I felt, after that presentation that I spooked them. I was like, yeah. oh, crap, they are not going to want to see, like, I really just nerded out on them and everything like that. And what I found out is they're like, well, that's, that's very valuable, but I, I can't waste an hour every month at a board meeting going over cybersecurity. Um, so what we did is we consolidated that uh, executive summary that was, it was pretty large. Um, we consolidated it down to the stuff they really wanted to see. And um, it took a little fine tuning and we would just give it to them and saying, is this good? And they're like, no, that's a little bit too much. Um, like our administrative council would kind of drive that conversation a little bit. Um, but yeah, where we got it to is it's pretty, it's a nice consolidated report. They review it uh, once a month at the board meeting and make sure, and we do it with the, all of our other executive summaries too. So it's kind of a packet they get of cybersecurity things. Um, and they, they, re, they go through it, they review it. And if they have any questions, they come directly to me, which is awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's been really neat. So you're a vendor's dream customer right now. The buying was fast, the implementation is fast. Right. You're finding more benefits. Where do you go from here? What else are you going to use the, the platform for? Where is your focus going forward? Right. So a lot of it now is, uh, you know, we've identified the things. We're getting the vendors in to start patching stuff. Um, we're reading a lot on the MBS2 sheets mm -hmm. uh, on knowing what we can do and taking advantage of that and possibly going to have some cost savings as a result of it. Yeah. Because if I can do my own uh, vital monitor upgrades and stuff like that, well, then I don't have to pay that guy to come in and do it anymore. Yeah. So we may even see a cost savings as a result of the information that we're getting from you guys. And which having, having those MDS twos digitized and right there, not having to chase them with vendors, so awesome, handy. Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And from our accreditation body, when they come in, we can print that off for them right there and be like, "Yep, this is why we did this upgrade." Yeah. Because we can do it. We're enabled to do it. FDA regulated, whatever. This says we can do it. Yes. And so you're a community hospital, not just a name, but we do service as well. What would you recommend to other community hospitals out there that might be a little uh, um, intimidated by addressing cybersecurity? Right. Um, I would say first and foremost that we all have antivirus. We may not have any sort of XDR, MDR, detection response, but every one of us has antivirus. And it's signature based and there's not a really, a, you know, we have to rely on somebody else getting hit with it first and then we get the patch, right? Or we find out about zero days or whatever. But one of the things that I never thought, and I've been an IoT guy for a long time, I would have never thought that what we discovered after we plug your guys' stuff in and start scanning our network, that we had that much stuff. And that we had that much stuff that was easily compromisable. Like, I looked up the first 10 things that I saw, I could, I could have, just knowing what I know, um, compromised within 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And east-west lateral movement took over the network, right? Yeah. I mean, just with that. And if, you know, and that's kind of the sad thing about that is because not everyone knows that. And there's a lot of uh, containerization, I guess, if you will, among like biomed, IT, maintenance. So you're talking about HVAC controllers versus, um, you know, vital monitors or anesthesia cards and life-saving equipment. And then you have IT that's like, hey, we'll secure it all. Trust me, we got it. And then the, you're we, like, the we got it mentality. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, we got Which it. It's natural. Well, and the, and, and the we got it mentality doesn't always flow down to IT either. Right. The maintenance guys will put in a new piece of equipment and be like, oh, IT got it. Well, we don't got it because right. we didn't yeah. know, <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, and what your device showed us was just a lot of, a lot of, interesting things let's just put it that way all right good to know um you're very active in the community you lead PIMS chapters yep. there's going to be a lot of, of hospitals your size out there is it okay if they reach out to you and ask for guidance absolutely awesome. um anytime um i have twitter handles i can go um at hci hillbilly so hyperconverging structure hillbilly which i thought was uh, kind of clever at the, the, the best twitter name we've had this week by far <laughs> <laughs> so hci hillbilly um i also lead an in hit group that i created a long time ago, Nebraska Healthcare IT, it's just a massive Slack channel, 21 different hospital systems, about 160 members, Nebraska Hymns chapter president. Um, yeah, there's, you can find me anywhere and I'm always happy to help, so. If we still print resumes, it would take that much. It was, yeah, yeah. it hey, would take a lot. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Great Appreciate job. It. Thank yep. you.